Have you been enjoying the lunches I've been making for you recently? What? Why do you ask? Well, because recently you've been eating every bite. You haven't left any food behind at all. I think that's so great. I'm relieved. They say soon after you get married, you stop taking an interest in the food your spouse makes for you. Honestly, I was worried. Every day there was always some food left over. Ah, you mean my lunchbox. It was so disgusting. Honestly, it was so bad to a level I couldn't even stomach it. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I didn't say anything. Telling you something like that would be really difficult, so I just kept it to myself. What was the name of that cooking school you went to again? What are you talking about? The lunch I made you was really that bad? You're serious? <laughs> I haven't eaten any of your lunches for over half a year now. It's so disgusting I can't even eat a single bite. That's why lately I've had to be patient and wait until dinner to eat a proper meal. Honestly, I just eat other things. Really? Are you serious? Why in the world didn't you tell me any of this? I thought even if I told you it wouldn't make much of a difference. That's not true. Don't say that. If you told me, I could have done something about it. I could have tried to get a little better. How can I say this? There is hardly any flavor at all. That's why I have no appetite for it. I don't feel like eating any of it. But that is because you had your physical recently. Your salt intake was too high. They said you need to reduce that amount of salt in your diet. It's hopeless. No matter what I say to you, you'll still be a wife who cooks terrible food. You can't cook at all. You can't keep your husband happy by cooking decent food. You're failing as a wife. That's why I want you to tell me the name of the place you had your cooking lesson. You're such a failure. <laughs> I've tried so hard. I really put my all into studying. I even wrote a cooking blog. Little by little, I even got some work. That's why I am so shocked my food didn't suit you. I can't believe this. It's not that it wasn't to my taste. Fact is, it was disgusting. Giving your hard-working husband such horrible food for lunch, do you want me to hate you or something? That wasn't what I wanted at all. How can you say such a thing to me? Wait, hold on a second. If it was so disgusting then, what happened to the food I made you? You told me every day you don't eat any of the food because it's just so disgusting. Do you just throw out the lunches then? Every day I have to go to a convenience store or fast food restaurant just to buy a decent meal. It's a much better alternative than trying to force myself the nasty slop my wife tries to feed me. But what about the food I spend time making for you? I give it to my co-worker to dispose of it for me. You mean you just throw it in the trash? No, that's not it. I mean I make my co-worker eat it. Your co-worker? Who do you mean? Yes, my co-worker, Nathan. Since we got married, I thought about inviting him over one of these days. But the gross food you make for me is so embarrassing, I don't bother calling him over anymore. That's too harsh. I was just looking out for you and your health, especially after your last physical. I was doing my part, and in my own way, making your food with love. But to say all of this, it just isn't right. It's horrible. I wish you said something to me earlier. Okay, fine. I'll tell you every day then from now on. How's that sound? Here. The food you make me is absolutely disgusting. You don't have to say that. But what do we do about your lunches? Should I just stop making them for you? Well, it seems to me like Nathan doesn't really have any money. But since it looks like he can stomach your lunches, I let him have it. Then isn't that okay? Keep making them and I can keep giving it to him to eat. That seems like a real bother for Nathan. That's enough. 
I'm just going to quit cooking. Please tell Nathan I'm not cooking food anymore. Not just your lunches, but I quit cooking altogether. Is this Ken's wife? It's been such a long time. Nathan? It really has been a long time. What is it? Do you need something? I heard from Ken about the lunch boxes. Oh, yeah, I'm really sorry about that. I had no idea my husband was giving you the food I made him every day. I'm sorry. I'm sure you felt like you couldn't turn it away. What? No, it was quite the opposite, actually. What? What do you mean by that? It was so delicious, and I can tell it was really healthy for me. To be honest, when I started eating your food, I somehow felt like I was getting healthy. It was amazing. Wait, do you really mean that it wasn't impossible to eat? You were actually able to stomach it? Absolutely, I really mean it. That's why, if it isn't too much trouble, do you think you can keep making them? You really mean that? You're not just being nice. If it's a problem, please let me know. You can say no, it's okay. Oh, of course I don't expect you to just keep making them for me for free. No, no, that's quite alright. I can't accept your money. If it's no problem for you, Nathan, then yes, I can keep making them. Really? You mean it? I'm so happy, thank you so much. But I can't accept your meals without paying you. Food of such high quality has to be paid for. I can't just take it from you for nothing. No, no, honestly, it's okay. To be honest, I'm really happy you told me what you think. I guess the recipe I used was helpful. Oh, absolutely, for sure. My husband had nothing but awful things to say about it. He only told me how disgusting it was. I lost all my confidence because of his comments. Thank you so much for your kind words, Nathan. So, it's settled. From now on, I'll give the lunches to my husband so he can give them to you. Will you not be eating dinner at home again tonight? No way, I'm not eating your food ever again. You don't need to go through the trouble of asking me over and over again about that. Oh, really? You refused the lunch, too. And recently, you don't even eat at home anymore. Are you trying to give me a guilt trip? What's with the sad way you're talking? The reason for all of this is because you're an absolutely horrendous cook. It's not my fault, so it can't be helped. Yes, yes, I know. My foolish co-worker keeps eating the stuff you make. It's a real mystery to me how he can continue to stomach it. I don't get it at all. That guy has some odd tastes, I guess. If you ask me, you're the mystery. You're the one I don't understand. You act like a big shot cook, but your food is the equivalent of garbage. Because the mere thought of it makes me sick to my stomach, I've been making my co-worker eat it instead. That's exactly why Nathan is the one advancing at work and getting promotions. What? What are you trying to say? Thanks to the lunches I make, Nathan became really healthy. Because of that, he's able to work so hard and efficiently. It's no wonder why he was the one to get promoted. He even has been hitting the gym. He feels really good. How in the world do you know all of that? And what do you mean he was the one who got promoted? I mean exactly what I said. It wasn't you, but your co-worker, Nathan, who got the promotion. He basically jumped over you and became section manager. Well, it was the obvious choice after all. Based by looks alone, he's more competent for the job and a better choice over you. What are you saying? That fool is the manager? I'm the one who became the manager. Well, it looks like there was already a personnel change. Because the food I make is so healthy, whoever eats it gains a healthy mind and body. 
Someone who's dedicated and watches their health has a good influence on their peers. To be honest, as the one responsible for making the healthy lunches, I'm quite happy about this. How in the world do you know all of this? Explain yourself. Since when do you guys talk to each other? You really don't know about anything, do you? You can't even do your job properly. You poor thing. It's so sad. What did you just say to me? There is no way someone who doesn't take care of their body can do your job. Absolutely no chance. It would be impossible. I told you to explain yourself. Answer me. Just what is it you want to say? Out with it already. Have you taken a good look at yourself in the mirror lately? What? You've been eating nothing but fast food and lunches from convenience stores. You put on 20 pounds. There has been so much development in food recently, and yet you still look like that? Unfortunately, it seems even if you went to the healthy food businesses, they couldn't even persuade you to change your eating habits. Hey, how dare you talk to me like that? It's your job to watch my health. You're my wife. It's your fault I look like this. It's your fault my body ended up this way. No, actually it isn't my fault at all. I did my part and made you healthy meals. The one who refused to eat them every single day was you. You are just trying to push it on me as my responsibility. Don't you think you're just a loser? A loser? Are you joking? You are a stay-at-home wife. You are supposed to feed me. One who claims to be a student of cooking, but in reality, cooks horribly. Who are you talking to me like that? What are you saying? It looks like no one is keeping you in the loop at all. The healthy, homemade food I make for Nathan? It looks like it became a topic of conversation within your company. Huh? Within the company? Are you talking about the company I work at? The company is partnering with a major convenience store and my food. The product development team, myself, Nathan, and a few others. Recently, we had several Zoom meetings together. You didn't know anything about that, did you? What? How can that be? Do you think you can just keep talking to me any way you want, especially in that tone? So, why don't I know any of this? Why wasn't I made aware about any of it? Because all you ever do is look down on me and badmouth me. Don't you think it would be hard for Nathan and the others to talk about any of this in front of you? Also, I may have told them they don't need to discuss any of this with you too. Why would you tell them that? I am your husband. Shouldn't I be the first one to hear about any of this? But you aren't my husband anymore. What? I want a divorce. A divorce? You're joking. You should know I'm not the type of person who'd make jokes about something so serious. Especially at a time like this. I wanted to tell you directly and to your face. What, are you really telling me you're serious? You say you want a divorce. There must be some sort of mistake. We don't see each other at all in our own home anymore. Even when we're actually together, you never listen to a single word I have to say. All you do is tell me how bad of a wife I am over and over. I'm sick of it. I have had enough of it. It's actually grown quite annoying. What? Annoying? You really mean that? You're serious about what you're saying? How many times are you going to ask that? I am not joking and I am not lying. Everything I said is the absolute truth, all of it. Hey, wait a second. Let's just both calm down for a little while. Even though you look the way you do, you still have nothing but awful things to say about me? You went for another physical checkup, right? And you had a young woman look after you and support you. I am such a fool. You made such a fool of me. What? No, wait. 
Someone who can look the way you do is able to have an affair? I admire and respect someone who has willpower, not someone who looks like you and having an affair no less. Did you say affair? Don't talk about such a baseless and completely untrue rumor. Ah, well, I already have the proof. It's no use trying to hide it. You can't evade this one. Did you say you have proof? Don't underestimate a woman. Because we are divorcing, I thought I should be as thorough as possible. I've been straightforward and steadfast in my preparations. Thanks to the collaboration, my meals are becoming a product at the convenience store. I am able to make rapid progress as a cooking expert. I don't have any more use for you. No use for me? How can you say such a thing? I have supported you this entire time, especially financially. You supported me, you say? I'm not so sure about that. You were barely able to cover our bills and living expenses. You limited how much I can work and confined me to our house. You forced me to be a housewife and do all the household work. And even after all that, all you could do is complain about my cooking and wouldn't eat anything I made? This isn't the life I want. This isn't even close to anything I had imagined. So how can you be surprised I want to throw this all away and get a divorce? It's miserable! Throw it all away? You mean throw away everything we have together? Everything we've built? Our whole relationship? That can't be right. You're making a big mistake. The only mistake is you and your way of thinking. I don't need an awful, domineering husband who does nothing but speak ill of his wife who loves him dearly. You can be the only one who likes your unhealthy self. I've had enough. Are you really leaving me? You're just going to abandon me? It's your job. You are the one who was supposed to look after my health and well-being. Nope, not anymore. I have done that job for two years already. I won't do it anymore. But in the end, it is up to you. If you want to be healthy, you'd be healthy. You're the one who made yourself so unhealthy. The only one to blame is yourself. Whenever I said to you, you just got mad and lashed out at me. Anyway, this is goodbye. No, please wait. You can't leave me like this. You are absolutely serious about a divorce? Really? Who is going to take care of me now then? What about asking the woman you're having an affair with? Maybe she'd be interested in the job. We aren't just getting a divorce, but I will of course be charging you for damages and reparations. It'll be a mystery how someone like you, especially without money, will be able to catch a woman. You're gonna sue me for my money? Just how much did you have planned? You were planning to do this from the start, weren't you? You don't love me anymore. You never loved me at all. What a disgusting thing to say. There is no way I loved you. How could I have? You gained 20 pounds since we got married. You even went as far as to cheat on me. Why would I be in love with a man like that? You never thought about me or my feelings. To someone like that, it's no question why love would be non-existent on my end. This is horrible, but, but I don't want a divorce. This isn't how I planned on things to go. Is that right? Oh well, that really is a shame, isn't it? But oh well, I've already decided. This is how it's going to be. You treated my lunches like garbage. But to me, and in my heart, the number one real garbage in my life was you. So why don't you just hop in a garbage disposal for me? Goodbye for good. In the end, Sarah left the house and divorced her husband. All Ken could do was stand there and watch. The one Ken was cheating with was charged for damages and consolation money. In a rage, she disappeared completely from Ken's life without a trace. Nathan remained the manager and Ken's boss, much to Ken's chagrin. 
And finally, the collaboration between Sarah's Healthy Food and the convenience store was a massive success. With Nathan's proven health success thanks to Sarah's food and also his upward mobility within his career, Sarah became a super famous chef. As for Ken, he lost his life savings due to paying Sarah for damages during their divorce settlement. Furthermore, he became extremely unreliable at the workplace, and at home he wasn't even capable of doing simple chores. Because of this, his house now is just overflowing with garbage. It's a complete mess. It seems he finally regrets what he did, and is beginning to accept responsibility for it, however. It's too little, too late. Hello, Sandra. I have to tell you this, but I think you're not suited for my son. I just cannot understand why Chris would choose you as his wife. What was he thinking? Are you still going on about that, mother? You've been sending me this line message countless times the past week or so. Haven't you had enough? All I'm doing is protecting my son. What mother would look the other way when their son is suffering? I really can't understand why you feel that way, mother. Chris was tricked into marrying you. You were only after his money. I saw it coming a mile away. That's where you're wrong. I married Chris because I wanted to build a happy family with him. Building a happy family for you means to live in an expensive high-rise condo and spend all his money. That's what happiness is for you. Since getting married, how much have you siphoned of him? How could you say that? Siphoned off? Please! You do realize that I work too and make a reasonable amount myself. We share all household costs for your information. The way I see it, your constant disapproval only disrespects your son. He's my son. Don't act like you know my son more than me. It's not only me. Chris also has grievances about you. One, your cooking is horrendous and you never clean. What's more, your personality is dull as ditch water. Did he really say that? Of course he did. Do you think I'm making it up? He said he wants a divorce. He really wants a divorce, huh? Yes, so give it to him already. He'll be way happier if you did. Divorce is not that easy, mother. You can't just say, okay, sure thing, and be done with it. It's more complicated than that. Still being pig-headed about it, huh? You really have the nerve, Sandra. Maybe I better start looking for a suitable wife for Chris to replace you. I don't have time for this, mother. I need to get back to work. Goodbye. Sandra, are you there? About this coming 4th of July weekend. We're going to see the fireworks with the whole family, and you're not welcome. Just so you know. A fireworks show? Yes, all the relatives are going to be there, so I figured it would be a great opportunity for everyone to get together. They have these stands ready at the park, so I made reservations for one of them for the entire family. We'll have front row seats. They even have a drink bar set up. But I'm sorry, there's no seat available for you. Of course, Chris is more than welcome. If you want to see fireworks, I suggest you watch it on TV or by some sparklers and set them off on the veranda or something. I see. All right, no problem. As you suggest, I'll stay home that evening and enjoy myself alone. That would be the best. Yes, mother, and thanks. I really hate crowds. I would much rather stay and relax. Accepting defeat pretty easily, Sandra. What's up? That fireworks display. We get a front row seat from our veranda on the 12th floor. The view is actually spectacular from here. I'll just sip some wine, relax, and take in the show. No crowds to contend with. Thanks, mother. Ah, uh, that's nice. Hey, Sandra, just finished work. I'm just getting into my car. She'll be home in like 30 minutes. Oh, hey, Chris. Pretty late over time? Yeah, end of the week, all. Hey. Did you have a little spat with my mom yesterday? Excuse me? A little spat? I just received a call from her. She left a cool message. She's talking about the upcoming fireworks display on July 4th, but, but she's going on about something or other. Mentioned your name a couple of times, but I couldn't make head nor tail about what she was saying. And what I got from it was that she called and starting a senseless attack on you, but that you retaliated. What's up? Did something happen? Oh, that. 
I wouldn't actually call it retaliating. She just texted me to say that they leased special reserve seats to watch the big fireworks display over the 4th of July weekend, but she made it point that I was not invited. First she harasses you, now treats you like an outcast. When is this ever going to stop? But you know me, I hate large crowds, so I was actually relieved not to be invited. So I just told her that I was happy I wasn't going, that I was actually thankful. I even thanked her for not inviting me. That was it about. I bet you anything that after a while her anger grew because of my indifference. Guess she figured out I would be more upset. I'm starting to get the picture. I got to say, Sandra, you've gotten really good at taming the talker. Yeah, well, we only converse online or by phone, so it's not face to face. I work all day, which allows me to avoid your mother. I don't know how things would have turned out if I was just a stay-at-home housewife. I hate to even imagine such a scenario. And when do we meet? It's always with you, so. She holds back on any criticism she has. I'm really sorry that I have to put you through this, Sandra. I keep warning her to back off, but she just ignores me. On the other hand, when I warn her, the backlash against you worsens. A real catch-22 situation. Don't worry about me, Chris. I can handle it. Thanks, but we really need to do something about it sooner than later. About that July 4th meet, I'll attend and say hello to everyone. I won't be too late. I don't want to think about the repercussions if I didn't show up. Yeah, no problem. Alright, I better get back onto the freeway. Should be there before 8pm. Alright, drive carefully. It seems you kept your promise and stayed home. Good evening, Mother. Two more hours before the fireworks start. Looks like a never evening for fireworks. You kept a super stiff upper lip the other day when you heard you weren't invited. But now that Chris is here enjoying himself and you all alone, I hope you don't feel stunned. I'm sorry to have to cut you off soon, but I'm going to have an online drinking party soon. I better get ready. Pardon me? An online what? Online drinking party. I have to log in now, so we'll talk again. Enjoy the fireworks. Log what? I really can't understand you, Sandra. Always talking gibberish. Hey, Sandra. You there? I'm heading home right this second. Chris, what's up? How about the fireworks show? Hasn't even started? Forget the damn fireworks. Uh, Chris, you kind of sound upset. What's up? Sorry, I'm not upset with you. It's Mom. I just found out the real reason why she didn't invite you tonight. Sorry, was there even a reason? I just thought she simply didn't want me there. Before I arrived, Mother apparently told everyone that you and I were already divorced. Wait, what? Already divorced? She introduced this girl saying she was my soon-to-be wife. And guess who that woman was? It was Lily. You've got to be kidding me. Are you talking about that very same Lily? The one that your mom was coming to match up with your older brother Kyle? That's right. When she stood up in front of everyone, all cheerful, and announced that she was my new wife, I went completely pale and then red hot. You're joking, right? This has to be a joke. This Lily, she was Kyle's old flame, right? I heard he broke up with her after she was caught cheating on him. Why her? What was she thinking? You know, Mother, she thinks Lily is pretty and that's why she likes her. Simply for that reason. She really pushed it with Kyle, but that didn't turn out as she planned for obvious reasons. She just couldn't let it go. So she figured she'd force her on me. Has she gone totally mental? Just because she has no affection for me doesn't mean she can't treat you like that. That's exactly right. I was furious. I told her off in front of everyone. I think I might have ruined the whole evening for everyone. Actually, I was so upset I couldn't stop myself. I blurted out everything. The way she treated you and forcing you to stay home today. About how she forced Lily onto Kyle. Even about her cheating on him. How did the other relatives react to all that? Apparently, Mum told them that Kyle was the one who cheated on Lily. And took off with some other woman. Seriously? That's awful. That little tidbit of information caused quite a commotion among all the relatives. They're currently having a family meeting right about now. I guess the fireworks display is on back burner for now, it seems. 
Oh yeah, my Uncle Frank took me aside and told me maybe I should check and make sure there were no false divorce filings in the past few days. I'm going to stop off at City Hall on way home and something to claim just in case. Chris, please, Chris, open the door. Please, let me in. I'm right outside your apartment complex. I know you're home. It's still the 4th of July weekend. I know you're still off from work. Please let me in. Mom, would you just stop? The buzzing is driving me bonkers. I'm trying to work. Work? What do you mean work? I told you not to contact me anymore. We're done as a family. I told you that the other day. But please, Chris! Will you stop with your blabbering, Mum? I introduced you to that factory. I thought you were already over there, for God's sake. I'm busy. Gotta go. Sandra, I know you're there. Let me in right this minute. Uh, mother, what do you want? It's all your adult. Lily hates me now. I put in an application for divorce and marriage to Lily, but that was apparently rejected as a fraud claim. So I must concede defeat regarding this whole marriage to Chris. Therefore, I have taken it upon myself to discipline you, to teach you the ropes on how to be the perfect wife. Chris deserved the best. We have a few days left of the holidays, so let's get started. There's no time to lose. Uh, I don't think so, Mother. We're both at the office now. Excuse me, at the office? Yes, the July 4th weekend is actually not that long, and besides, both Chris and I work in a business that requires 24-hour operation. Even on holidays, we all work in shifts. Then get someone else to take your shift and come back home right this second. This is not a request. This is a command from your mother-in-law. Uh, Mother, is it true that you got kicked out of your own home? Pardon me? That home is owned by your husband's younger brother, if I got my facts correct, isn't that so? I heard you were just living there for free after your husband passed away, but that incident the other day was the last straw and you were kicked out of that house. Chris introduced me to a company called Ace Industries, I believe. He arranged for a live-in position as an office receptionist. You were supposed to start today according to Chris, so why are you at our place? Well, seems obvious, right? You guys have this spacious condo, plenty of room here. Chris has enough income to take care of me, so why would I even accept such a position? That reminds me, you quit your part-time job after your husband passed and just lived off his inheritance? I heard that nest egg is about to dry up. Uh, why do you even know about that? I was briefed on all the details about the family meeting you had the other day. After we introduced Lily as Chris's new wife, nice try by the way. Are you serious? You were briefed? Also, I may as well tell you now, about that tower condo you're so fond of, I bought that place when I was still single. I own that place. Wait, you own that condo? Yes, I was not only working at that time, but also inherited a bunch of real estate assets when my father passed away, so... Does that mean you make more than Chris? Yeah, I guess that you can say that. As for who you can or cannot live in that condo, I own the place and I have every right to make such decisions. This must be a mistake. And why would I want to live with someone that has been harassing me, treating me like dirt these past few years? Sorry, but I'm not really into masochism. But I'm... Where am I going to live then? That's why Chris introduced you to that position at Ace Industries. I would take it if I were you. Uh, a car just pulled up in front of your condo. That black van isn't for me, is it? Did Chris call them? Oh, did it arrive? That was pretty quick. There was talk of you trying to escape, and so there was an APB put on you. Chris called them, I suppose you don't have time to check your line messages. At least for now. After that conversation, the staff of Ace Industry picked her up and took her straight to the factory dormitory. I heard that the following day at the same dormitory, Lily showed up. Not sure about the details, but I heard she hooked up with some lowlife and somehow accumulated a huge debt with the guy who later skipped town, leaving her with all that debt. 
When I first heard that they were together in the same dormitory, I was a little concerned, but they apparently got along great and worked as a sort of a team. Working surprisingly efficiently together, after a year, they even started to enjoy their newfound passion for work. They even vowed to work until retirement as a team. Chris told me that the president of Ace Industries had planned it that way and was positive that it would work out in such a manner. I guess he knows people. I probably won't meet Chris's mom again, but I'm happy that she found a purpose in life.